Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this problem, we want to get some practice writing moment functions for a beam. We've got a simply supported beam here, and we would like to uh, write moment functions. Um, the problem's already given us the origin. So we've got our origin set over here at the leftmost fiber. We're going to run our x coordinate system left to right. And specifically, we're going to use subscripts to designate domains. So our x1 coordinate system is going to only apply to the left half of the beam. So mathematically, we could write that something like this. So we're going to start at 0 and go up to and include L over 2. OK. And for the other side of the beam, when we look at the domain of x2, we will set that up. pertain to all of those fibers. Those are the fibers between L over 2 and X equals L. Okay, so X is going to be our position coordinate for this problem. All right, now the thing that makes these types of problems so hard are the sign conventions, okay? And I get that that's not an exciting thing to learn about. I get that 100%. But if you want to master this and you've got to master it to have a fighting chance at beam deflections, you gotta, gotta, gotta pay attention to the signs. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn my loading diagram into a free body diagram. I'm going to do that by freeing the body from the supports. So I'm just going to erase the roller and erase the pin, P-I-N pin, and I'm going to replace those with vectors that represent the actions of those supports on the body or on the beam. And I'm going to go ahead and convert that line load into an equivalent force, just like this. All right, so I'm going to turn down the volume on this one temporarily. And I'm going to come in here just temporarily. I'll put my concentrated force or resultant force. And I'm going to put it right in the middle of that load distribution. And it's equal to the load intensity of W uh, times the distance of L over 2, right? That's what that shows right there. And that is located L over 4 from the leftmost fiber, and then 3 quarters of the way, or 3L over 4 over to fiber B, OK? We can use a little bit of a shortcut here. We know that when we have an applied load at the quarter point like this, we know that the near support is going to pick up three quarters or 75% of that, and then only 25% is going to be over here. So over on the left support, I'm just going to say three quarters of WL over two. And so that's going to turn out to be three eighths of W times L. And for the far support, I'm going to use one quarter of WL over 2. And so that's going to be equal to WL over 8. Of course, both of these um, reactions are going to be upward. And I'll transfer that information over to our um, main diagram. OK, so I'm just going to put 3 8 WL here, WL over 8 there. And then that temporary layer I can just get rid of. Don't need that anymore. All right, 
So we've got our body in static equilibrium now, force equilibrium and moment equilibrium. If you didn't follow where that three quarters, one quarter relationship came from, go ahead and do a moment summation and uh, you'll, you'll see where that came from by doing that operation. All right, let's go ahead and start cutting uh, the free bodies that we need in order to write these moment equations. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to grab, I'm going to cut at distance x sub 1, I don't need that one in there. All right, so we're going to cut at distance x sub 1. I'm going to choose to take the left side of this body. Yeah, I think that's what I want right there. So let's do a copy merge and then, uh, okay, let me try that one more time. In fact, actually, I'm going to make this a little simpler and then I can clean it up to make it look what I want it to do. So I'm going to take all this right here and yep, copy merged, paste that in and I'll put that free body over here and then we'll just zoom in and clean it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. So what don't I need? I no longer need that length that doesn't make any, uh, any difference to me and I don't need this extra blue line. And I need to add a couple things to get this body in equilibrium. Go ahead and dash this like, like right there. And I like to use kind of a bold line for the cut itself. So ch -ch -ch -ch, cut through that fiber at distance x1 from the origin that is designated right there. Okay. All right. Looking good. Okay, is our free body in equilibrium yet? And the answer is nope, it sure is not. I need to get my internal shear force. Make this a little smaller and move it over and zoom in. Okay, good, looking good. So I've got my internal shear force in the plane. Now that's a positive X plane. So the positive internal shear force goes down and I'm gonna call that V sub one internal shear force as it varies um, for all values of position X one. And we know from using free bodies, right? That if I were to cut at different values, I'd have different amounts of shear at those planes. And the reason why as the bigger my cut is, the more distributed load I have sitting on top of that diagram. What I would like to do is convert that distributed load into a resultant force, okay? So I'm taking that load W and I'm making a statically equivalent system, putting it right there in the middle. So it's a remove and replace kind of step here. And this force is the intensity force per distance W, that constant value, multiplied by coordinate X1. And if you have, you know, force per distance times distance, that does get you up to units of force. So this is like a little resultant force calculation that we've done right there. Okay, is our body in equilibrium? No way. We also need our internal bending moment that lives in the fibers of the solid material. And we're going to call that one M1, okay, a moment function that varies values with respect to position X1. Okay, now we're in equilibrium and we're ready to do our moment equilibrium equation. So I always will do this in a certain way. I will always do the summation of moments about the cut is equal to zero. And the reason why I want to do my summation about the cut, in other words, right there, that centroid 
of the area like right there that axis coming out of the page that is what i want to do my moment summation about because if i do it there i do not need to calculate my internal shear force if you were to sum moments about another point another axis like this one over here is a common one that students would be like hey i want to sum moments over here makes more sense to me i'm used to doing it this way um, you can do that provided that you use an equation of equilibrium to solve for what that shear equation is. Okay, I'm going to do this the easiest way, which is to sum moments about the cut, and I certainly recommend that you do the same. Okay, after I kind of get that sorted out, I always do a little bit of tallying to ask myself how many terms are going to be in this moment summation. So I'm going to have my first term be that force at distance x1, my second term this force, and the distance between that force and my cut is x1 over two right because it's got to be half of the distance of the free body um, and then our third term of course we would not want to forget our internal bending moment at the cut in fact that's what the purpose of this problem is is to write that moment function we are ready to go first term three eighths w times l distance x sub one sine tends to rotate the body clockwise or negative. Okay, rotating the body about the axis that we're summing the moments. Okay, looking good. Next term we have W X one and the distance is X one over two. So I'm gonna just combine one step there. So W X one times X one over two equals W X one squared over two. And how about a sign for that one? Well, that tends to rotate the body. Um, that is not what I meant to do. That tends to rotate the body um, uh, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, so positive. All right, and the last term, the internal moment itself, that's an m1 x1. That's going to be equal to zero. We need a sign for that, of course, and that one is going to be a positive sign. Okay, not because it's an internal positive bending moment, but due to our old friend from statics, the sign convention, the counterclockwise is defined as positive. Right? More specifically, for a moment summation, the tendency of the body to rotate about an axis, about a z axis, in the counterclockwise direction we define that as positive all right let's um sort through this equation so it's going to put m sub one x sub one equals and toss everything out to the other side and please get in the habit of organizing your polynomials in descending order of x or x sub one in our case so i'll put minus w x one squared over two and then we're going to need to do a positive three eights w l x one okay and that's all we're asked to do so that is that is the moment equation in its simplest form for the domain x1 ranging from values of x1 equals 0 all the way to x1 equals L over 2. You want to know what the moment is for any of those planes. Well, you just plug in your value of x into that equation. All right, so we've got part one done, uh, but we can't forget about the other one. So we also have a domain set up x2. Like what's going on over here in these fibers? Well, we have to set that up using coordinate um, x2. So let's see if I can do this properly this time. I'm going to cut through x2, right through this plane. And I'm going to I'm going to ask you what you think is easier. Would you rather mess with this free body on the left or are you thinking this free body on the right looks a little friendlier? And I'm going to go with this free body on the right. It's going to be just a little bit easier, a little bit less work for us, okay? So I'll do a um, copy merged and a paste of that. And now that I've got that little piece, I'll just kind of get some of this out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. All 
All right. Looking good. All right. Here's my question to you. It's an important one. So we just cut through this plane right there. So in our picture, cutting through the solid material. And we need to put our free body in equilibrium. So of course we keep the reaction. That is a force applied to the body. So we want to keep that for sure. And you know, just as before, we want to do a positive shear force at the support. But of course, the positive direction is no longer down. It is now up. I'll call that V2X2. If you're wondering why, you need to do some, some work and some study on sign conventions for internal shear force and internal bending moment. The positive direction for internal bending moment on the negative X face of a free body such as this will be clockwise. That's defined as positive. And that one we'll call M2X2. We also need to determine the length of the free body. And this is the one I want you to think really carefully about. Okay, here's how I would think through this. I'm gonna get like a uh, purple color, purple color. Okay, so I wanna figure out this little length right here. I can determine that by taking the entire length L and then subtracting out the length X sub two. So all I have to do to get that length on my free body would be L minus, I'm gonna use a finer pen, sorry about that, L minus X sub two, like that. Okay. Now that we've got our free body, we don't need any of that context and we're ready to tackle the second domain. This one's gonna be a little less involved than the last one we had to do. Why less involved? Well, I've only got one, two terms in my moment summation. And remember, we're summing about this axis at the cut plane. Imagine that axis coming out of the screen like that Z axis. Okay, tendency to rotate about that axis is what we want to do. We set up our equation. Summation of moments about the cut is equal to zero. First term M sub two function of position x sub 2, that one is clockwise negative. Next term, WL over 8, distance L minus x sub 2, that sign is a tendency to rotate counterclockwise, positive, set that equal to 0. Now we rearrange our equation to get it in the conventional form. So I'll put m sub 2, x sub 2 on one side, and on the other side, I'll have WL over 8. And I'll go ahead and kind of expand this as I go. OK, so that would be a WL squared over 8 minus uh, WLX2 over 8. And the way that I would prefer you to, um, to write these in your final answer, right, is to just descend the polynomial in order of the exponent for position. Okay, so here we have our first term, which would be minus WL over 8x2. Our second term is a constant because there's no x2 there. And so that would be plus WL squared over 8. So we have our solution, the moment function. And it's corresponding domain. So a bit of a challenge problem to you, if you would like to take the time to do it. For each of these cuts, practice taking the other free body diagram. So for cut x1, we took this piece, you try sorting that out and see if you can get the same polynomial out of the end. If all of your signs are correct, you'll get the exact same um, expression. 
For x sub 2, like we cut here, we analyze that side, you analyze this side, and see if you can get the exact same polynomial. It's a great way to practice these problems and master them so that when you go on to integrate this expression twice and apply boundary conditions to solve for the deformed shape, the deflected shape, the elastic curve, um, that you'll be well prepared to excel at that task. That's the end of this video. Thanks for tuning in.